And in the meantime, here at home, you know, daily reactions to the whole situation um, are coming in. An open letter signed by uh, fairly well-known actors, very well-known and fairly well-known actors condemning Israeli military actions in particular have been criticised for failing to mention uh, the terror attacks carried out by Hamas. More than 2,000 artists, actors and musicians in the UK, ranging from um, names like Tilda Swinton, Steve Coogan, Charles Dance, Maxine Peake, uh, just to name a, a few, uh, signed the letter. And they called uh, for an immediate ceasefire in Gaza and for our governments to end their military and political support for Israel's actions. Um, I'll read a little more of, of the letter and then we'll talk to one of the co-signatures of it. Um, our governments are not only tolerating war crimes, but aiding and abetting them said the letter, and it's written uh, by a group called Artists for Palestine UK. Um, let's talk to one of their number now, Samir Eskander, a British-Palestinian artist and human rights activist, um, as I said, who's, who co-signed that open letter. Samir, thank you for joining me today. Hi, thanks for having me. What, what was the intention of the letter? Is it specifically about aid to Gaza and relief in Gaza? Well, I more than three and a half thousand artists have now signed the letter you mentioned and another more than 600 including Sally Rooney, Naomi Klein and other famous authors have made a similar call in the London Review of Books and I am aware of more statements along the way signed by thousands more artists also calling for ceasefire and an end to the complicity of the British government and other Western governments that are not only failing to call for ceasefire but actually sending arms to Israel whilst it carries out these massacres. We urgently need to see an immediate humanitarian ceasefire guaranteed by the UN, an immediate entry to Gaza of life-saving humanitarian needs, including basic supplies of water, food, fuel, medicine. We need UN protection for the 2.3 million Palestinian civilians trapped under siege in Gaza. We need a comprehensive military embargo on Israel, as was done to apartheid South Africa in the past. And finally, we also need a full and swift investigation by the International Criminal Court into war crimes and crimes against humanity, including the crime of genocide and apartheid. When you say you oppose it all, do you include, um, I'm just trying to get clear to the nuts and bolts of what it is you're opposing here. Are you opposing militaries, uh, Israel's military moves comprehensively? Or just the fact that they've imposed a siege? Or the fact that maybe you believe they're too careless about where the bombs go? What specifically are you opposing in that letter? Well, all, all of it? As you know, yes. I mean, as you know, the Israeli defense minister has ordered a complete siege against what he calls, quote, human animals. Hmm. Other mili Israeli ministers are openly calling for ethnic cleansing. Um, as more than 800 international scholars have warned, and I quote, as scholars and practitioners of international law, conflict studies, and genocide studies, we are compelled to sound the alarm about the possibility of the crime of genocide being perpetrated by Israeli forces against per okay. Palestinians in yeah. the Gaza Strip. I, I, I so understand. anyone who, who wants... So the siege, the siege and the moves made on the siege, which many people are describing as breaking international law and which both Biden and Rishi Sunak, actually they haven't stated yet, have they, publicly that, he, that, that they need to lift that, but they have spoken about humanitarian aid getting in in the South. But I, I just need, I just want to be clear, is it opposing any military action, any bombing at all by Israel, i.e. any response in a way at all to what happened on October the 7th in, in the south by Hamas? Yes, and anyone who wants to see an end to all violence, myself included, and I hope everyone listening to this would agree, our priority must be urgently to try to prevent Israel's genocide in Gaza and the Israeli um, modern genocide Scholar Raz Siegel calls it a textbook case. What do you of think? Genocide. Sorry, what are you calling a genocide specifically? These are big words, aren't they? Massacre and genocide. What? 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 It, what are so, you? I'm just curious of what you and your co-signees are saying is a genocide in, in, in Gaza. Is it the potential for a genocide if so many people don't get food and water for weeks on end? They will, of course, be dying in the streets. That's that's a given. Um, and, and that would be appalling. And, you know, anyone speaking against that has my vote and has my backing. But what what genocide, as things stand, are you talking about? So to be clear, the letter that you referenced in the beginning, this doesn't mention genocide. Here I'm quoting more than 800 international scholars that are warning about, quote, the possibility of the crime of genocide being perpetrated 
by Israeli forces against Palestinians because in the of Gaza the siege. Strip. Because of the siege or the bombing as well? All of it. And the denial of basic supplies, starving people, not allowing them water and basic medicines. Operations are being carried out in Gaza without um, um, anesthetic. There are bodies lying under the rubble mm. as we speak. Yeah. And the Convention on the Prevention and Punishment of the Crime of Genocide, which seeks to prevent and punish the crime of genocide, it highlights the need to prevent or stop an ongoing genocide. And it makes clear that inaction by states is criminal complicity in genocide itself. The British government, far from inaction, is still actively green lighting Israel's crimes against humanity, with Prime Minister Sunak going to Israel as we speak and failing to even demand a ceasefire. This is nothing less than, as the signatories to the Artists for Palestine letter wrote, nothing less than aiding and abetting war would, crimes would, and massacres. Would this you, complicity in crimes against humanity is what has prompted thousands of artists to speak out. Would you describe what happened in the south of Israel on October the 7th, the murders of 1,300 Jewish civilians? Would you describe, mostly Jewish civilians, um, would you describe that as a massacre? I think that we can't understand what is happening and your listeners won't be able to understand what's happening without understanding how we got here. I agree with the Brazilian educator Paulo Freire who wrote that with oppression, quote, violence has already begun. The violence of the oppressed is by definition a reaction to the initial violence of the oppressor. So if do you, justify you want it? to end violence, do you, you must do you, end oppression. I, do, do you justify it uh, in using that? To explain to explain how to understand the root cause of violence is not to justify anything. In this case, Israel's 75-year-old regime of apartheid, occupation and settler colonialism is the root cause of violence. If you want to be ethically consistent, we have to apply the same standards in all situations. You can't colonize a place. You can't colonize a place that your people have also had deep connections to for 14 centuries, can you? As cuz as Jews have and Palestinians have. Who's colonising who? I mean, I understand the blockade. I understand the tremendous difficulties of the last uh, however many years you want to, you know, people land at different points in time, don't they? But I, I, I understand that. But but, but colonising is, is a different thing altogether, isn't it, than this? And, and I've, I've noticed the word being used a lot. But anyway, that's let's leave that bit to one side because we're, we're both clearly... I can respond to that point. Oh, OK, feel free, feel free. The indigenous people of historic Palestine are the Palestinians. And the, and the Palestinian people have always included people of different, different faiths. Um, the, the Palestinian people are historically very diverse people, and they have included Jews. Now, Zionism, which is Israel's state ideology, is a settler colonial movement that colonized Palestine and ethnically cleansed Palestine starting in 1947. Okay. So, so that's what we say when we talk about settler colonialism. Is everybody who signed the letter then, given what you've just said, against the existence of Israel because of how it came about? Or, or are you interested in some kind of peaceful coexistence? I mean, I know it seems far I don't away think at the there's, moment. I don't think there's anything in the letter which says anything along those lines. No, I'm I, I'm, that's why I'm asking you. Is that, it, 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 is that it, because what you've just said there suggests that, it, that they just shouldn't be there? That's your reading. What I'm saying is that is it wrong? Israel's... Seven more than second seven decades old regime of apartheid and occupation and settler colonialism should be dismantled. That's my view. And and um, it's, and it, what happens to Israelis in that dismantling? Where do they go? Nobody, nobody is calling for expulsions. What we're doing is opposing ethnic cleansing. So to invert our peaceful calls for accountability for the dismantling of apartheid, which is a legal and moral obligation that every state has and and i to invert you know, that and 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 interpret it as a call for ethnic cleansing is is perverse and i think i in my conversation with you and having read the letter and many people listening would absolutely echo the desire for the siege to end would absolutely echo any move possible to uh, get aid into into Gaza as soon as possible uh, to, so that people can survive this appalling situation. And in the, I don't know, I don't know the, the length of time this is going to take, but in the hopefully short term rather than long term, get a ceasefire um, underway if we can. But I, I, I do note, and you know, lots of people have noted that the letter doesn't really address the massacre 
in the south of Israel and and you in your response to my question about it, how you would describe that, reveal, a, a, it sounded to me, if, if I'm wrong, please say so, a, a kind of sort of disregard for that pain. Um, that, you know, the, the, everybody's suffering here, aren't they? But you've chosen a very particular group who, to support and only them. As I've said, I think anyone who wants to see an end to violence, our urgent moral responsibility and priority must be to prevent the unfolding genocide as leading scholars are calling it. Anything other than that right now um, is a lesser priority. So all of us have a profound moral obligation to speak up against what is taking place in Gaza right now. So the Jewish families and their suffering in light of what's gone on and is going on with the hostages, their suffering is less than, is it? Less than the Palestinians. This isn't a game of trying to hierarchize whose pain is no. is worse than anybody else's. I know, but I'm, pr I'm prompted consistent. by your language, not my own, I promise you. I, I, I admire your efforts to get help for the Palestinian people. I do, truly, from, from my heart. But I... I am discomforted by your attitude to the massacre on October the 7th, if I'm honest. Be ethically consistent. Everybody has to apply the same standards in all situations, right? Oh, you're That's not. your point too. You're not. International law defends the right of all occupied people to resist, whether that's in Ukraine or in Gaza. Attacks against non-combatants are illegal under international law, regardless of the perpetrator. Our peaceful calls for Israel to be held accountable according to international law are now more urgent than ever. We're and calling for, uh, to, for and ending and links of complicity with apartheid Israel. We need to move towards freedom, justice and equality for Palestinians and everyone else. And we need more artists to speak out. OK. And, and Hamas killed non-combatants as well. You recognise that, don't you? As I've said, under international law, that's got to be the framework that we apply consistently. Is that being applied consistently in all standards? International law defends the right of all occupied people to resist, but whether not, that's but, Ukraine but, but not to or kill Gaza or anybody else. As I've said, attacks against non-combatants are illegal, regardless of the perpetrator. So Hamas, Hamas have law. committed the, 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 a war crime? According to international law, the right of people to resist is enshrined. That's not in question here, I assume. No. Nor is the question of attacking or harming non-combatants, according to international law, regardless no, yeah. of the perpetrator. But, but people can hear how you will not go to that question and answer it about Hamas. People, I can hear you and people can hear you. Um, and I'm just curious as to why you can't. I have answered your question many, many times. I want to see an end to all violence. Do you? I very much do, uh, but I don't think you have. So to end violence, we have to address the root cause of violence. Now, what's the root cause of violence in this situation? Well, you believe it's Israel. Israel is a 75-year-old regime of apartheid and occupation. Okay. So by, def by definition, according to the Brazilian educator Paulo Freire, who I quoted earlier. You've said that already, yeah. So, Samir, thank you. I'm, I'm going to leave it by there. Definition. I'm going to leave it there because you're, you know, you've you've absolutely uh, had your say, and you know that big elements of what you're fighting for, lots of people very much want to come to pass, as well. But that that failure really to uh, to answer about the, the massacre and Hamas is is noted.